morning! Here we are on a nice shallow weedy bay, hoping to catch some pre-spawning pike. And I have a special guest. Can you guess who the special guest is? The special guest is my hot sexy wife. And Bump. You can't really see Bump. Bump is in underneath about 12 layers of clothes. But let's see how we get on today. Let's hope we actually catch something because last week the 25 pounder didn't turn up. We're fishing. Wife is on her phone. Bits are out, bits are oiled. It's too windy for the bait boat. I don't even want to try with the bait boat, but it's too windy. Today's cooking with scobes is not just any bacon sandwich. It's Marks and Spencer's two for a fiver bacon sandwiches. Gotta spoil the wife when I take her fishing. Otherwise she doesn't come fishing. She's already getting tuck, stuck into her uh, jar, of, jar of nastiness. So, what time is it? I think it's just gone half ten, quarter to eleven. It's just gone half eleven. I think it's time for something to eat, don't you? Yeah. What about jam? Does jam think it's time to eat? Jam's ready to eat too. Okay. Time to get some bacon sandwiches on the go. Just need a pike to show up. I've had one drop run on the pol on the pollen. I'm hoping that's not the last of it. But this wind has tested me. A few moments later. Right, we're gonna pop up a bit. You can see all these little trailer screw in, they screw into the mouth of the bait, into the belly, and then have a length of wire that gets wrapped around the treble, so this comes back. You don't want to leave this in the fish. So I'm going to pop up the roach here. First of all, I'm going to turn off the alarm. And I'm going to wind this in. I'm casting into weed here, you see, so this is going to come in with lots of weed. So I'm going to pop it up, and that makes the bit all popped up, and it should stand above the weed. Which will be better. See what I mean? It's coming in with lots of weed in it. So you want it to pop up above the weed. You don't want all that on your bit. You want the weed to be uh, on the bottom and your bit to be popped up above it. So this is the sort of stuff that the pike are looking for. Nice weed to spawn in. In fact, if I can just show you this on the end of my finger here. That there on my thumbnail, I'm not sure if you can see it. That's a fish egg. So just flick that back into the water there. So I'm going to pop up my uh, my roach dead bit here. So your roach dead bit. Stick it in its mouth and then you just twist it all the head in. And it'll go into its stomach cavity. And I have lost my little bit of wire. Magical. I'm going to have to put that on again. Or put it all the way in. Right, so come here, wire. I need you. So let's just put that in. Just wrap that loosely around it there.
this is a uh, rigging wire fox micket so I'm going to take this hook out take these scales off and just start to wrap this wire around this hook put that back into the bait and then just wrap this around it for a little bit just to tuck it out of the way I think aren't going to notice it. And it should, it should float. There you go. See how it floats up? That's what we want. I'll just take this weed away. Let's get this one cast out. into the bite alarm. We never injected it with oil, we forgot, so the next time we'll do that. That lead's that heavy, it's actually plugging in the dirt. That's what's on the bottom here, it's a nice clay salt, which is good because it means no zebra mussels. your drop arm to be behind your reel, just behind the lip of your reel. Normally I have it as tight to the reel as I can, but with this wind it's making it a bit difficult. I mean I can go, I can lift, lift it up like that and it'll sit for a while, but it'll pull the stretch out of the, or pull the uh, loose line, loose, any loose line in the wind, the drop arm will set it down. Let's turn this back on. That is our roach, popped up, ready to rock. Oh, no, not another drop run. Oh, drop run again. I don't see any teeth marks, so I'm just going to whack this back out again. I was just actually coming up to put oil in the uh, oil into the uh, smelt, and the, the drop arm just went. So. Yeah, my quiet day fishing. It's uh, going to be interesting because there's guys over there re-roading stuff. Re-roading. Right, pollen. Joey mackerel. Roach and smelt on the end here. I'm going to re I'm going to oil up the smelt and put it over there. So let's get let's get that done. wind was going the other direction I could put a drifter float and get to the distances but 
We're in the wind here, so we just have to deal with what we have. And as you can see, the bottom is uh, very weedy. That's just weeds. So, weeds aren't so bad. And here we have a nice big smelt. And I'm going to hook it so that there's two hooks inside of it. Like so. And then I'm going to give the bugger plenty of oil and whack it out this way. I like to push a lot of holes in the side of it. And this is the oil seep out a wee bit. Push the flavour into the water. Alright, let's get this bad boy cast out. We're not exactly getting a million miles here, are we? Plus the wind, you know. Can't really do shit with the wind. Let's go back to the stand now. I have to tighten up. Turn this alarm off, otherwise we'll have 9 million bleeps. That's the problem when I'm fishing with braid I find. You've cast out, you've wound down tight, and then the braid kind of takes on water. And that's the good thing that the drop arm is heavy because it's fit to uh, pull the slack out of the, out of the, out of the line. This one actually looks like it's just off the edge here, but it's just about 30 yards that way. This one's straight out in front of us. Oh, wind is a killer today. It's that windy I've had to tie down my, uh, my, my unhooking cradle, because the wind was pushing it that way into the water. So it's tied down. But. We're all good, we're fishing. Wife's over there. Uh, for some reason, pregnant Mrs. Scobie is now eating assorted, a jar of assorted pickles and mango chutney cre uh, crisps. Don't know why. I'm putting it down to uh, pregnant. But assorted pickles and mango chutney crisps. I personally can't think of a worse combination, but it's not me. I'm not sure if that was the wind or if that was a run. I put it down to the wind. So no marks in the bait. That's the pollen again. Last time I fished here it was a lot higher. The uh, jetties to my right were uh, underwater at points, so it's fell down a fair bit. 
But if I'm finding fish eggs in the uh, the weeds that's coming back on the leads, then that's that's probably my cue to say that the pike have uh, started spawning. They won't all have spawned, but they will have started. But I'm kind of at catch 22. I can't go and buy bait to fish for uh, roach or bream or anything because the shops are all shut. So I'm going to have to fish for pike. You know, jigs. I'll just have to carry on fishing for pike. You know, what a tragedy, eh? I have a funny feeling that these will be the last, if today is not the last, then it'll be up there with the uh, the last of the pike fishing for the 2020 uh, slash 21 pike fishing season. It's not been a good year. It's been bloody hard. But that's pike fishing. That's pike fishing on uh, public water here in Northern Ireland. I've been restricted. I can't. Usually, I would have went across into the Republic of Ireland to fish a few places that I know across there, but it isn't worth the 200 euro uh, fine if the police catch you. So I've been stuck on the uh, the urn, which isn't terrible. I mean, it's, there's places I know on the urn where if I go to, I know I catch fish, but. You know, this is to get an absolute kick in from everybody, so I, I... What can you do? There's places on, I mean at the minute we're fishing the upper locker and, and it's... The upper is always the easier of the two, when I mean, you have the upper, the river and the lower. The lower is a ball breaker, it's always been a ball breaker. But the lower has bigger fish and they are really hard to catch. So it's catch 22. The lower also has the problems with the game anglers and the uh, commercial fishing, the net guys. You know, for three solid months there will be nets on the lower destroying the fishery. All to uh, keep a few knuckle dragon trout anglers happy. But I've discussed that enough on the vlogs. It's not a bad day. You know, it's, it's windy, but that's about it, really. There's been a few showers, I feel like drizzle, but nothing serious. How do you know you're in a rough part of Fermanagh? When the uh, the deep water signs have bullet holes in them. The uh, the sign that says stop the spread of the zebra mussels is on a post that tells you that there's a, a warning for deep water and someone has uh, shot it. So that tells you that you're in a, a rougher area. You know, it's a bit like turned up to that session where we turned up to on the river and there was burnt out cars. It's just unfortunate it's just part of life unfortunately you just have to get around it in other news I see we're all still uh, still locked down still not allowed to go anywhere and those that have took the vaccination still can't go on a holiday Was the point, eh? If you can't take the vaccination, can we go back to work? No. Can we visit our family? No. Can we go on holiday? No. Can we go to the pub? No. So what's the fucking point? And then we have the, uh, the strategic defence review body has recommended that the British Army drops its number of troops down to uh, 70 something thousand. Now ordinarily this is a, I would be there thinking, you know, uh, this wouldn't be good. But it's a strange one because they've, they're all about reducing the number of frontline fighting infantry. But they're spending more money on tech. 
you know, things like flying mortars, uh, throwaway drones. You know, they're making the digi they're making the battlefield, they're digitizing the battlefield, and using uh, tech to aid the troops. There was an exercise recently in California where uh, a tiny force of Royal Marine Commandos overwhelmed and destroyed a much larger American uh, force. You know, the, the exercise was actually called off half or very, very shortly into it. You know, the Marines showed what a well equipped, well motivated, and highly trained unit can do to a a defensive unit. Now, normally, if the defence people are, if the strategic, normally I would have looked at strategic review body as disasters for the military. That was a beep. Drop arm still attached. I'm putting that down as the wind. You know, if they're cutting the number of troops, they're cutting the aircraft, blah blah blah, and they're cutting the money. Then that's bad. But it's a strange one. They're cutting down numbers but increasing money. So there's talk of uh, upgraded military equipment, which is good. But then it makes me wonder if you're upgrading the tech and upgrading the equipment, who's going to man the equipment? Or are we going to rely more on drone warfare? But don't get me wrong, the capability of drones is, is well proven. The Royal Air Force used drones in Afghanistan and in Iraq, and they are well worth the money. You can have a pilot sat in a comfortable chair in a base, somewhere like the, the British, British Air Force drones are flown out of Nevada and America. So you have a guy in America that's fit to fly a drone and target an individual, fit to drop a kinetic weapon, to take out an individual target, but does that replace boots on the ground? You know, it's the old saying: smart bombs are nothing without smart people to uh, mark targets, call targets. You need a combination of the both. But the the, the people that I I would listen to in the Ministry of Defence, not the uh, the, the penny pension civil servants that want to fucking turn the military into a, the next the next phase of the woke bullshit. They've already taken over the police. They're trying to do it to the military. Not those people. Actual military warriors. They're fit to look at it and say, this isn't a bad thing. This isn't something we should be worried about. So I'll hold uh, I'll hold off on criticism. When I was at Kinloss, up in the Highlands of Scotland, the Defence Review Body basically ordered that the Nimrod airframe was destroyed. Now the Nimrods were used to hunt down submarines because our traditional enemy, the Russians, tend to use submarines. And it was such a monumental cock up that they got rid of the only airframe we had that was capable of hunting submarines fixed wing airframe that the British Ministry of Defence had to go to America and rent airframes. The Americans loved that because they just charged over the odds. You know, so it goes back to the defence review body before that, scrapping the Harriers, saying that we're going to get a uh, Joint Strike Fighter. And Joint Strike Fighter was nearly delayed by, I think it was just shy of a decade it's been delayed. We're only getting it online now. So, while the, com the countries that we sold Harriers to, like the Americans, still use theirs, we scrapped ours. Don't understand the decisions being made at the very top. But, now oh well. I like to think, I like to keep, a key, like to keep looking at the, what's happening in the world of defence, because it is our defence at the end of the day. I don't ever think we'll see a battle of uh, Russian tanks storming through lowland Germany into the mainland Europe. I don't ever think we'll see that. I don't think Russia could afford it. I don't think we'll see uh, the 
the same thing, same thing with the Chinese. I think China's engaged in uh, a lot of cyber warfare at the minute. And their biological warfare that we're all suffering from. It's a very strange relationship China has with the world. They'll buy up land in Africa, Asia, you know, like all over the place. And then they'll just move people to that area and eventually that area becomes China. That's how it all kicked off with the uh, the Indians and the Chinese in northern India. Where China basically marched across the border and said this is now ours. And the Indians kind of fought back and said I don't bloody think so. You know. But, strange times we live in. I'll bet you one, th one thing's for sure. The Chinese forces, they're not experimenting with woke gender bending uh, fluidity. They're not making uh, combat clothing and body armor to specifically fit pregnant women, like the Americans are. Because that's a fucking bright idea, sending a pregnant woman to uh, frontline combat. Strange times. Bacon's on the joke, eh? Are you just picking the fatty bits off? Yeah. Okay, weirdo. So Mr. Dog Walker picks up after the dog and just doesn't let it shit everywhere. Well, hmm? well as long as it's cute, as long as it picks up after it, we don't, we don't really mind. Many times I go fishing and dirty fuckers take their dogs out and don't clean up after them. I'm hungry at the minute, I don't care what they're there. That pan's old, so it's probably, I don't know, I'll get a cook set later on I guess. I don't need one right now. Have you ever left them up? Mm-hmm. Nice bacon. Right, let's just have a go here. Let's just let's see the pollen. Let's just went.
dropped run. I don't think it was a run, I think it was just the wind. One eternity later. Well, that's the end of today's session. This rain's just getting the rain scheduled, and then the wind's going to get worse. So, just going to get while the getting is good. I looked at something come up now and snatched that. What? That's all the wee girl, that's all the wee scales. What? Deep enough now in there. Watch that hooks. Everything was in the weeds. This is a smelt. Uh, they, they're an estuary fish. You actually catch them in lock foil. Yeah. Have I ever seen a lot of them? Uh, no. Yeah, unfortunately it didn't do any good for us today now. Screw these out. Yeah. No, no, it's all right. I'll sort them out. Oh, hold the, the cord. 
cork. Don't hold it by the. Hold it like that there. That way it's all kind of. That way your hands aren't going to get snagged up by hooks and I don't have to perform surgery on you. <laughs> Take my fish in small doses. See if I can get her to catch something eventually one day. <laughs> I quite like these bank sticks, the Signet 2020 range. I quite like them. The stage stands as well. Rock solid. Lightweight, rock solid. Take a beating. Just what you want in bank bank sticks. I have tracker ones, twistic tracker twistic ones, and they are very very good. But Christ, they weigh a ton. You know that you're carrying them things. Put it that way. Where are your troops? Until the next time, tight lines. So troops, the session with uh, Mrs. Scobie on the bump. That's the last pike session of 2020 slash 2021. As you can see down there, all the pike gear is out of the van. That means that I'm gonna have to uh, load up the, uh, the course fishing gear it's sitting in there. And like select some of that ground bait shit. <laughs> but I'm going to be ordering, uh, I've never actually ordered online maggots before, but we can't get them here because all the shops are shut to like the end of April. So I'm going to be ordering um, live bait from the from England. So pff, fuck knows how that's going to turn out. Anyway, I want to say thank you to everyone that supported me this year who's uh, sent kind comments and you know inspirational words you guys definitely helped me out um, the sessions weren't exactly awesome tough winter tough winter uh, there was some guys that I know that, that did very very well and fair play to them and you know you know what else can you say you know fair play to you I know a couple of guys that got some uh, some 30 pounders and yes it kind of hurts that those fish came from places that i was fishing but fair play to you congratulations i'm very happy for you and i'll just have to work harder for the next occasion i will probably still do some days lure fishing but for the bait fishing that's it over for the year i normally knock it on the head once the, the pike start to spawn you know, all the weeds that I was pulling in on the last session had clumps of eggs. So that's me saying, yeah, time to quit. This is this, this season's over. So let's look forward to uh, getting some feeder fishing, some coarse fishing. I'm going to do some, uh, hopefully get some sea fishing and some taupe fishing if the COVID ever uh, lets us go out on charters again. But I also plan to do some tench fishing. So at the minute... It's transition phase, 
I'm going to be ordering bits online, so that's going to be interesting. I've never done that before. So I'll let you know how that works out for me. But, apart from that, guys, thank you very much for everyone who's been on the on the vlogs and on the you know the facebooks and everything you know all the new subscribers well welcome aboard and we'll just have to keep going i hope you enjoy what's going to come in the summertime and that's about it really uh obviously fishing might take a bit of a break uh right about the start of july bump is going to make an appearance in the start of july so i'm going to have to uh Take care of wife and baby, so fishing might take a little back seat. But, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to the summer. A lot of opportunities. So, hope you've joined me. And, uh, thanks for watching.